Luke chapter uh, 3, go down here to verse 19. It says, Repent you therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing, everybody say refreshing. The times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached to you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution or restoration. Everybody say restoration. Oh, hallelujah. You know, when you understand this in the, in the scope of restoration, being fully restored, uh, literally to the state it was before the fall, to the point that we are totally refreshed. Come on, somebody. How many know there were rivers in that Garden of Eden? Glory to God. Oh, <laughs> look what it says here. Verse 20, uh, verse 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached to you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of, of all his holy prophets since the world began. Hallelujah. You know, it says here that uh, there are times, plural, of refreshing. How many know this would be a good time <laughs> for refreshing in your life? We need an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I believe when you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, uh, you get refreshed. I, I believe that th there is rain from heaven. I believe there is a well. Glory be to God. I believe there is water refreshing that gets on you and gets in you. And, and, and you know you've been revived. You've been refreshed. You, you've, uh, <laughs> you know, there are, there, they say one of the biggest things in the world today uh, that cause all kinds of, of grief and all kinds of of disease, really, uh, sickness, is stress. Stress is actually one of the biggest causes. If people think it's food or, or lack of exercise, or, and all those things contribute. But how many know that stress is a major problem, and yet we should be the people that have no stress? Amen. Amen. We should be the people that are walking in the peace that passes all understanding that we enter in to that indwelling, that, that we just press into the Holy Spirit. How many know we have the Holy Spirit? How many know you can grieve the Holy Spirit? How many know you can quench the Holy Spirit? A lot of people quench the Holy Spirit every day because they're so busy doing this and doing that, and yet it's time to have a relationship not only with Jesus, not only with the Father, but have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How many know that there is a comforter? <laughs> a comforter that has been given. Jesus said, I have to leave so that you will get what you lost in the fall. We've been fully restored. We have a, a Holy Spirit that's revealing to us everything that belongs to us in Christ. Whew, there are things that belong to us in Christ that, that we just, well, some glad morning we're going to, you know, get those things. Some glad morning we're going to fly away, oh glory. I don't know about you, but I became a Christian when I got born again. I entered into a covenant with Jesus and with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. When I got born again, I, old things had passed away. Behold, all things, everybody say all things, all things. became new. Amen. Your future is a conqueror. Conquering over everything the enemy has tried to do and tried to tell you and lie to you about. But you enter into the presence of God. You enter in and know that you've been reconciled to the Father. You've been reconciled to God so that you can cry out, Daddy. Not some glad morning, but this morning. 
I'm talking about a, a personal God and His presence putting a smile on your face. And you know that you know that you know everything is going to be okay. Glory be to God. Woo! I said glory be to God. Restored. Flowing. Flowing in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Turn with me to John chapter 4. Let's get into this. John chapter 4. Let's go down to verse 14. Thank you, Lord. But whosoever drinks... Now, this is, the, this is the woman at the well. How many know that this was Jacob's well? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is an old well. Uh, this was Jacob's well that Jesus went to and found the Samaritan woman. Now, this was not a Jewish woman. This was a Samaritan. Now, the Samaritans worshipped the same God. They worshipped him, but not in Jerusalem. They worshipped him. You know, here they are in Samaria. But Jesus went to Jacob's well. Come on, somebody. When we understand what was going on with this, when we understand, oh, there's something about Jacob's well. Jacob's well, uh, Jewish history tells us that, that Jacob's well would burst forth with water. Like a geyser. I mean, just, just spring forth with, with water. Hallelujah. Well, it dug down, they believe, somewhere around 150 feet. That's no small, uh, you know, thing to do. Uh, now, today, it's somewhere around 75 foot. But dug down so deep that when, it, when they hit water, whoo, they hit a gusher. Come on, somebody. I mean, that water sprung up like, oh, my, 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 my. So Jacob's well was a very, very important thing. And we've got to take that into context in understanding Jesus talking to this woman that was drawing water from that particular, that particular well. Verse 14, But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him, this is Jesus talking, shall never thirst. Hallelujah. Now, she's, she's, she's putting down her bucket down into that water, and she's bringing it up, and, and, and Jesus says, I've got some water you don't know about. Whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Hallelujah. He is saying here, just like Jacob's well that sprung up. Come on, somebody. That well that sprung up, there is a well that God wants to put in you. There's a well in you that God wants to cause to spring up in you. Glory to God. We, to understand this, go back with me to the book of, of Numbers. You know, John chapter 7 Verse 38 and 39 says, Out of your belly, out of your heart, shall flow rivers of living water. And then the next verse says, And that water is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Somebody say Holy Spirit. Turn with me to Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. And uh, go down here to verse, well, just verse 1. No, verse 17, I'm sorry. Verse 17. Then Israel... <laughs> go back to verse 16. you got to understand this. Go back to verse 16. And from there they went to Beer, that is the well. Now this was not a well of beer. I want to make that clear. Some people think that's where the refreshing is. I am telling you. The word beer means... The well. Now, nobody take that in regards to anything else. Come on, somebody. The word <laughs> beer was the name of the town, but they named it that way because they named it because of the well. 
Everybody say, the well. The well. Not a well, but the well. I'm going to preach myself happy. Glory to God. Amen. I saw this so clearly. The well. This is the well. Now, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob digs this well, gets it. <laughs> it springs forth. Now, many, 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 many years later, Moses. Now, Numbers chapter uh, 21, verse 17. Well, verse 16. And, and there, from, <laughs> there went to beer. That is the well, the well, whereof the Lord spoke to Moses. Now, this is Moses. I'm talking about thousands of years later, the well. Now, his, Jewish history tells us it's the same well. Gather the people together, and I will give them, I will give them water. I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, sing you to it, hallelujah. The princes dug the well, and the nobles of the people dug it in the direction. How many know it sprung up? Again. Because this is the well. Jesus comes to the same well another couple thousand years later. And he's talking about a well that will spring up in you. And he's digging. He's digging. He, he's making a well inside of you. He, he's making a place inside your heart for the Holy Spirit. He's waiting for you to enter into a place where you sing a new song. Amen. Spring up a well. You're downtrodden. You're weary. You're, you're just... This past week, I, 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 <laughs> I went over here to the new Dutch Brothers. And I noticed there was a bunch of <clears throat> tall bushes blocking our sign. It said kind of great faith, but you couldn't see church on the side of our building. So I decided, I took a big long ladder and put it on the other side of the fence. And I got up there with an with a electric he uh, hedger, just like a superhero on the top of that ladder. What I wasn't realizing was I ended up having to get the snippers because there was some big, thick, I mean, and I'm out there, found out it was over 100 degrees out. Not smart. I was out there over an hour and a half, got it down to the point where you could read the whole sign, got back in here, drank more water than I've... <clears throat> Drank it. How many know water's refreshing? <laughs> oh, my, my, my. I even had an ice pack on my head. That, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I tell you what. Anybody want to volunteer in the future and help? Uh, anyway. So, <laughs> but I tell you what. There's a refreshing. Amen. Doesn't matter how, how hot, how bad, how. They were going through a desert. God made a well. He put a well for Jacob. He put a well for Moses. And he's got a well inside of you that will cause a refreshing. He's got a well inside of you that will refresh you where you never have to walk in stress, where you never have to walk in another problem. When the problem comes on you, you stir up the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Do you know it says you edify yourself when you speak in an unknown tongue. You edify yourself. That word edify literally in the Greek is the word charge. You charge yourself up. I mean, no, uh, we've been given the Holy Spirit. Some people say, well, I don't, I don't really need, uh, you know, all them, you know. I, I mean, I can see the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, the attributes of God. I can see that those are important. But I don't really need all those gifts. You know it's the gifts that restore us to the power that Adam had to the point where we walk in dominion. It's the fruit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit that cause us to know who we are and what we have. And our authority as believers. 
as we walk in that, as we walk and press into the Holy Spirit, we begin to walk in the things. And, and one of the gifts is speaking in tongues. Your prayer language. Well, I don't understand it. Well, God does. And how many know when you pray in an unknown tongue, you're doing two major things. You are speaking a language the enemy don't know. It's code. It's, it's a language of angels. And when you speak in that unknown tongue, you're speaking some things of things you don't even know you're supposed to pray, it's things that you didn't even know were about to happen, but the Spirit is making intercession for you. Amen. And the second big thing is it's charging you up. Amen. Paul said, I, 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 I speak in tongues more than y'all. He was texting, did you know that? <laughs> Glory to God. Did you get that? Man, you just fill up with the Holy Spirit. You've got a well. You got a well, and in Jesus, that well never runs dry. <laughs> don't quench the well. Glory be to God. I said, don't quench the well. Woo, hallelujah. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 12. I want everything that God has. I want to walk in all of the attributes and all of the provision that is given to us and taught by the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 12, and uh, go down to verse 3. Therefore, with joy, everybody say joy. joy. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of Yeshua. How many know the word salvation is the word Yeshua in the Old Testament? I mean, you know, when Jesus was at Jacob's well with the Samaritan woman, he was talking to her about, with joy, you're going to draw water from the wells of Jesus. That word salvation is the word Jesus, Yeshua. Come on, somebody. That's prophetic. That's a word that was, was written here in Isaiah that Jesus would come one day and be the well. Be the one who would bring forth the water of the Holy Spirit. Spirit that, that he would bring forth this, this water that would spring up inside of you and refresh you. I want to get refreshed every morning. You know how you get refreshed every morning? Just pray and, and praise him and enter into his presence for the times of refreshing and enter in and press into the Holy Spirit. Do it every morning. Do it the first thing. Do it e I do it before I even get out of bed. And then I keep doing it when I walk my dog every morning. Glory to God. Why? Because I start my day with Jesus. Don't start your day any other way. Come on. You want a good day? Start your day with Jesus. You want, you want a day where you're springing? I mean springing. <laughs> I, I'm talking about being excited about the things of God. Start your day. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first the king of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. And he'll, he'll do some things in your life that will absolutely change your life. He'll do some things that will put a smile on your face when, when everybody else is sad. When everybody else is saying, hey, don't you know what's going on in you? You say, yeah, but I know the one who loves me. And if, if <laughs> how many know there's no weapon formed against you that's going to prosper? When I see things that happen negatively, I, I, I immediately say, that's working together for my good. And, 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 and you know what? It does. It turns around. Amen. There is a refreshing. Amen. But you've got to seek him to get it. When Jesus was at the well, he was saying, I'm the water. This well's been here a long time. And they sang out that song. Spring up, O oh well. Come on, somebody. Remember that song? Spring up, O oh well. Within my soul, spring up, O oh well. 
and make me whole. Spring up, oh well, and give to me that life abundantly. Abundantly. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. We need to have a song in our heart, amen? amen? We need to have a song in our heart. And he said, sing to it. Amen. Moses said, sing to that well. Amen. I'm telling you, sing to that well that's inside of you. There's a void before you're saved that only God can fill. But there's many fillings. And it's up to you to keep it full. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. There's joy in His presence. The wells of Yeshua. Hallelujah. I like Psalm 42, 1. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul pants or longs after you, O God. I got that painting on my wall in my office. Deers coming to the water. Glory to God. I, 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 we need to be like that. We need, to, we need to press in to the Holy Spirit. That's the water. That's what it tells us in John. The Holy Spirit's the water. The Holy Spirit is the one that springs forth. The one that refreshes you. Turn with me to Psalm 36. How many love the word? Psalm 36, oh, we got to get this. <laughs> you don't need to be walking around feeling defeated. You've got the victory. You've got Jesus. Glory to God. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Psalm 36, verse 7. How excellent, I like that. How excellent is your loving kindness. The word loving kindness is the word hased. It is the loving covenant of God. The eternal love covenant of God. That's a powerful word there. It says, how excellent is your hased, your covenant, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust, put their faith under the shadow of your wings in other words, they put their faith in your presence. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the abundance of your house. And you shall make them drink of the river of your pleasures. The word there for pleasures is the word Eden. That word there in the Hebrew is Eden. God wants us to be fully restored. He wants us to drink of the waters, the refreshing of being fully reconciled to God, fully restored, fully redeemed. Just as if Adam never sinned. We are now the children of God. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Come on, somebody. You are new creations. New creatures, new creations. You've been recreated, born again. And when you know who you are, you're going to begin to walk in this blessing. The rivers of Eden. The full restoration of God. The waters of His salvation. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. His presence. Overflowing, abundant, life. <laughs> and that's what's revealed. It says, for you, verse 9, for with you is the fountain of life. Spring up, O fountain. The fountain of life in your light shall we see. See what? No, the light is, what, is what's revealing something. It's revealing the fountain of life. How many water, how many know water brings life? 
You put water in a desert. You know, Southern California was a desert until they brought, brought the aqueducts down and all the water to Southern California and started planting groves, orange groves and avocado groves. And, 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 and literally, they changed that whole place to, uh, a, 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 my goodness, a, a, a fertile land. Same thing with Israel. There's something about water. You can see a desert and there'll be a, a river or creek going through the desert and the only place there'll be trees is along the river. Water brings life. Holy Spirit brings life. Jesus came that you might have life, life and that life more abundantly. I'm talking about abundant life that comes by the Spirit. I'm talking about abundant life that you're supposed to be walking in. I'm talking about a life that's filled with joy. Amen. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. A fountain that rises up in you and a fountain that rises up to over... I spring up, oh well. Spring up and overflow at Walmart. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about springing up and overflowing everywhere you go. I'm not talking about in the flesh. I'm talking about something so real people know it. Peter, he over, <laughs> it wasn't his shadow. He sprung up and overflowed on somebody. Amen. The shadow just represents the closeness that was involved and, and, and the presence. Does, does it, it's, talking, it's talking about the anointing. How many, how many know you're Christians? How many know it, that word means anointed ones? Amen. How many know your shadow, your presence, should bring joy to somebody? Hallelujah. You should be overflowing on somebody. Well, they, they, I, that person, I, I, they, they're just mean to me, and they're just, they're just right. Oh, I don't like them, and, they, and they're just so sour. Well, then maybe they need some of your water. Maybe you should be overflowing on. Maybe God put them in your life to overflow on. A lot of times people will, will confront people harshly because they've been confronted harshly. How many know a soft answer will do away with the wrath? Amen. So we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't walk that way. We don't walk the way of the world. We don't get in anger and fussing and fighting. You know. and, and, and let me tell you something. We're not haters. We're not haters. We don't condone sin, but we don't hate people. We love people. We love our neighbor. We walk in a covenant of love. We walk in love, glory. Be. There are people, my gosh, I was at the Academy Awards. I was not accepting. I was out there. I was preaching down the street, so I went over there. And uh, I was standing outside, and the lim right where the limos were pulling up, and, and the people were getting out of the limos. And I was right there seeing the, you know, people getting out of their limos. I figured I was there, might as well go over and, and uh, But there was one guy with a megaphone telling them how they're all sinners and going to hell. And, and I remember this one got out and said, I'm a Christian. <laughs> they just walked over. But, but they were, they were, they were, there was no love in it. There was no love in it. I'm not talking about loving sin. I'm talking about loving people. Time for us to overflow with the love and the joy and the Holy Spirit. Where people feel something different about you. They see something different about you that they want and it will fill the void in their life. Let me tell you something. Everybody has a void in their life if they don't have Jesus. And once they get it, got to tell somebody. Amen. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Turn with me to Psalm 68. Psalm 68. And go down here to verse 9. You, O oh God, did send a plentiful, <laughs> abundant 
rain. Whereby you did confirm your inheritance. Hmm. When it, when it was weary. So in other words, <laughs> they're weary. They're wondering, is the inheritance going to happen? How many know that rain brings the crop? Rain brings the inheritance. There's a former rain and latter rain coming together. Come on, somebody. There's an inheritance that, that belongs to the sons and daughters of God. There's, a, there's an inheritance that Jesus paid for. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Look what it says. Uh, weary. Are you weary? I'm going to bring a plentiful rain. Are you weary? I'm going to bring rain. Are you weary? I, I'm about to pour down abundant rain of blessings. Matter of fact, abundant blessings of rain is coming. Amen. In context, they were, they were coming from the wilderness. Forty years they had spent in the wilderness. How many know it, shouldn't, it should, have, <laughs> should have taken them about a week or two? It took them 40 years. Why? Because there was giants in the land. They really didn't want to go that way. Besides, they're getting food, manna, and quail, and, and uh, another vice president, I forget his name. And, uh, and, 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 and water from the rock, amen. And, and they're just blessed out there, you know, and plus their sin was keeping them there. But this in context is saying... There's an inheritance coming. There's a promised land coming. You might have been going 40 years, but there's something good that's about to happen. There's an inheritance about to happen. There's an outflowing of abundance that's about to break forth. Come on, somebody. You might have been weary. You might have been going and going and going, and you don't know. <laughs> I remember many, many years ago, and I was talking about this a while back, we were preaching up in Canada, Kathleen and and the girls ministered to the children. They, they had a, a wonderful uh, ministry. My wife and my daughters called Kids Force. Uh, they ministered uh, several years for Kenneth Copeland at the Southwest Believers Convention. Uh, the only ones that ever did puppets for him. If you hear about the puppets, that was my daughters. And, uh, and, and the largest churches in America were, were asking for my daughters to come on staff. And my daughter said, no, we, we're with my dad. That blesses me. Glory to God. Well, we were traveling up in Canada, and uh, we were pulling a big, big uh, utility trailer behind us with all the stuff, and, and, and we're going, and, and I'm, I'm going <laughs> on the transcontinental Canadian whatever highway, way up in the Rockies, cliffs going way down, and I see in my side mirror an angel not in the spirit, I saw it with my natural eyes. Saw it. And it was flying alongside my trailer, holding my trailer. I looked at it. I pulled over to the side. I said to Kathleen, my wife, I said, I said, I just saw an angel. She looked at me. And I got out of the car. I'm going back to talk to that angel. And the angel was all golden, shimmery golden. I learned later on in Scripture as we did that angel series that some of them, the warring angels, are golden. I didn't remember that when I read the Bible through, but praise God, I saw it, glory to God. But the angel, when I got back, there wasn't there anymore. But I noticed the lug nuts on the wheel of the utility trailer, all of them were gone except one, broken off. And, and, and the the tire was real hot. We had put too much in that utility trail. And, uh, well, I think one bro broke off at that point. Another one broke off later. Uh, I think it was only one that broke off at that point. But anyway, we're right next to a cliff that went way down there. Little, big river, little thread. I mean, way down there. If I had not seen that angel, I would not have pulled over, and I probably would have gone over. 
The tower was about to burst. Weary, chugging along, going. We went forward, slower. We got to the top of the highest point, over 5,000 feet, highest point. And we found out earlier that our brakes would burn going downhill with that tra We didn't have any brakes on the trailer. Okay, the trailer was given to us. Okay. And so we get over the highest point and we start going down and this trailer is pushing us and, and I knew, I, it was almost an audible voice, you're going to die. This thing is going to push you right over. The brakes are not going to hold. Smoke is coming up from our brakes. I pulled over. I got out of the car. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I brought my family up here to die. I said, I don't know what to do. And then a refreshing came on me the presence of the Lord. And the Lord said to me, put it in low gear. I put that thing in low gear. I didn't even think about it. I mean, it just came in. Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't my thoughts. I put it in low gear, and we went down that mountain. I mean, we went really slow until it started going really fast. And it, it, that, if anybody knows that one, it just curves and curves and curves all the way down. And we got to the bottom. And we went across to Cal Calgary and we went across to the border. And when we were just over the border into the United States, oh, we kissed the ground. Glory to God. <laughs> we're at a restroom and Kathleen, we, we went on our way. And as we're going on our way, hundreds of miles later, Kathleen says to me, I left my wallet in that bathroom back there. She had all the money. She had all, we, we got traveler's checks for that one. I said, well, do you remember the name of the place? And, and we remembered, and we called them, and we said, there, she had put the stuff in an a eyeglass case. There's an eyeglass case on the back of the toilet there. Well, when did you put it there? <clears throat> Yesterday. The guy said, well, I'm sure it's not there now. I said, could you look? He goes and he comes back. He says, yeah, it's here. I said, could you send it to us? And we were heading towards Tulsa. And I said, I said uh, could you send it general delivery there? Because at that point, we were moving. We didn't, ha we, weren't, <laughs> we, weren't, we didn't have a place there to have it sent to. But you can send a general delivery to the main post office. So when we arrived in Tulsa, we get to the main post office, we go up to the counter, and it's not there. Now, how many know we're getting weary at this point? Long trip. 40 years in the wilderness. I said, could you check again, please? We, we really need to have that. Guy goes back and comes back and says, no. The lady standing behind us says, it, it, what's, what's, what's the problem? I said, uh, it's all right. She said, no, 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 wait, wait, what's the problem? I said, well, we, we just came. We're on a ministry trip coming back. And I said, this sounds like I'm with a con man and trying to get money. And <laughs> I'm saying, I, I said, they sent us uh, the money and, and it's not here yet. She goes, just a minute. She runs over to a pay phone. She calls her pastor. They put us up at the Hilton across the street from ORU. Gave us dinner and a tank of gas. We walked into that place. I turned on the TV, opened up the drapes. There's the praying hands and chariots of fires playing on the TV. And the times of refreshing. And that money came, glory to God. Hallelujah. There are times in your life 
that you've got to keep pressing because you know the inheritance is there. You've got to know that the promised land is there. You've got to know that the times of refreshing will come if you keep trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn with me to Joel. Well, I'll just read Joel. Joel chapter 2 verse 23 says, it, it says, the former rain, talking about the end times, the former rain and the latter rain will come together. We're talking about a gully washer. We're talking about a revival, an end time revival that has, I'm talking about an end time revival of the Holy Spirit of a refreshing, of a water, of, of, of glory that comes down on this earth, creative miracles and signs and wonders, and, and the greatest outpouring the world has ever seen. And this church is going to be right dab in the middle of it. Glory to God. God told me to start this church for that very purpose. And I tell you what, when it starts flowing, we're going to be right there in the middle of it, and people are going to be drawn Amen. to the presence, drawn to Jesus, saved, healed, delivered, set free, and refreshed by the glory of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to end this morning in Isaiah 44. I mean, you know, it says during that time, it says everything, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar that's been stolen in your life is going to be restored. In other words, a time of re restoration like no other. Glory be to God. It's about to happen. Talking about the abundance in the well. Abundant life that comes from that water source. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 3. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. I'm thirsty. I want more of God today than yesterday. I'll pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your seed and my blessing, everybody say blessing, blessing. upon your offspring. Hallelujah. And they shall spring up, everybody say spring up, as among the grass and the willows by the water courses. Water brings abundant life. The Holy Spirit brings abundant life. If you're thirsty for God, you will be filled. You will be refreshed by the Holy Spirit. God will pour out His blessings. There are blessings that will put a smile on your face as you get refreshed in the truth, as you receive the water that brings forth your harvest. Hallelujah. Say, I receive, I receive the, waters the waters of Yeshua. Of Yeshua. I, am I am a well. And that water, that water is springing up. Springing up. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord. For, the wells of for the wells of refreshing. I'm entering in, entering in. to the times the time. of refreshing. The former rain, the former rain. and the latter rain. the latter rain, I've got it. I, got it. I, enter, in. I enter in. I speak it forth. Speak it forth. Spring, up. Spring up. Spring up, O well. Up, well. I'm, refreshed. I'm refreshed. Say, I'm refreshed. I'm refreshed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Come on, somebody give him glory. Uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. There is a well. And that well is in you. And that well is springing up the glory of God. Let it spring. 
Sing to it. Sing to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you need prayer this morning, slip up your hand. You need prayer, spring up. Hallelujah. Jerry, 